Александр, привет. Уважаемая госпожа генеральный секретарь, дорогие коллеги, мы рады, что несмотря на ограничения, связанные с пандемией, коронавирусной инфекцией, мы можем провести полноценные очные переговоры в классическом формате. Secretary General, colleagues, I'm glad that despite pandemic-induced restrictions, we are able to have full-fledged negotiations in person. Россия является крупнейшей европейской страной, активным участником Совета Европы. Присоединились мы к 67 правовым актам этой паневропейской организации и воплотили их нормы в национальное законодательство в целом ряде случаев. Россия является крупнейшей Council of Europe, we play an active role in this organization, and we have acceded to 67 legal instruments, and we have implemented them in our national legislation. И мы очень надеемся и постоянно подчеркиваем это в наших контактах с европейскими коллегами, что все механизмы Совета Европы, все институты Совета Европы будут применять имеющиеся конвенции добросовестно, без попыток их интерпретировать с односторонних позиций. И, конечно, мы очень надеемся, что кризис в Совете Европы, который удалось преодолеть в прошлом году, послужит уроком тем, кто пытался подорвать предназначение Совета Европы, которое закреплено в его уставе, имея в виду обеспечение единства правового и гуманитарного пространства на континенте без разделительных линий на основе уважения суверенного равенства государств. I would like to add that I hope that once we have overcome this crisis last year, uh, we will take all the lessons, and the lessons learned mean that no one would ever try to undermine the mission uh, of the statute of the Council of Europe, and that is the common legal and humanitarian space in the continent that, is, that has no dividing lines and is based on equality and sovereignty of states. <coughs> Поэтому мы очень удовлетворены тем, что сегодня имеем возможность обсудить с вами весь комплекс задач, которые на данном этапе стоит, стоят перед Советом Европы, и э, посмотреть на то, как наше, наше сотрудничество э, с Советом развивается на самых разных направлениях. So we are satisfied that today we have an opportunity to discuss all of the tasks that we have ahead and we can see how we can develop our cooperation on all the avenues of work of the Council. Знаю также, что у вас еще будут контакты с уполномоченной по правам человека госпожой Москальковой и с министром юстиции Российской Федерации Константином Чуйченко. Так что убежден, что насыщенная программа визита позволит нам продвинуться в наших отношениях. На новую, на новый уровень. I know that you are also going to see Commissioner for Human Rights, Ms. Moskalkova, and Minister of Justice, Mr. Chuchenko. So I hope that your eventful program would help you make strides in our cooperation. Welcome again. Uh, dear Minister, dear colleagues, uh, first of all, let me uh, say how uh, happy I am to be here in Moscow, in spite of uh, the pandemic uh, crisis that is ravaging throughout uh, Europe, so in all of our member states, uh, and uh, to uh, start engaging in a really uh, constructive dialogue with the Russian Federation, uh, starting with this uh, meeting with you, Minister Lavrov, but also you mentioned several important uh, figures for our relations, uh, Council of Europe, uh, Russian Federation, that have been uh, very vocal in promoting uh, the roles and the values uh, and standards for the Council of Europe. 
thank you also for recalling the importance that uh, uh, Council of Europe has for the overall archi architecture in, uh, in Europe and that uh, we are uh, this unique organization that was built up after the Second World War where uh, uh, the uh, very value and very foundation of the organization is protecting peace and prosperity through dialogue uh, for more unity. And I think uh, the, the, uh, the events that you recalled actually uh, have shown more than ever how important the organization is for uh, peace and prosperity and greater unity in Europe, but also how important it is to resist any challenges that may be ahead, and there are many, and uh, COVID uh, also only exacerbated uh, this. But of course, first and utmost, uh, this is an excellent uh, opportunity to exchange views that are for both uh, for the Council of Europe and for Russian Federation important. And uh, this is uh, certainly some of the issues that we are having on our agenda on the Council of Europe side. There, is a, uh, there are proposals that I will make to the Com Committee of Ministers very soon for the organization priorities for next four years. I think uh, in view of the COVID, but in general in view of importance of strategic uh, thinking, uh, this uh, is a very important step, so I would very much uh, look forward for exchanging with you on that. But of course, there are a number of bilateral issues between Council of Europe and uh, and uh, and the uh, Russian Federation. I just mentioned that uh, the issue of uh, recommendation made by our monitoring and advisory bodies, their implementation, and of course, execution of uh, the uh, European Court of Human Rights uh, decisions. So, but just to name a few uh, that are very vocal, and of course, I think in this very, uh, a very particular situation to exchange uh, on how Council of Europe and how our member states can better prepare in the future for similar crisis as the one we are going through due to COVID-19, and uh, how we can become more resilient in the future, and certainly uh, the work that is prepared uh, that has been done uh, on the side of Council of Europe showed uh, how important it is to react at the same time, protect human lives and, uh, and public health, but at the same time having uh, uh, proportionate uh, uh, measures in order to safeguard public health and human rights, democracy, rule of law, which are the values we stand for. So I'm really looking forward to this exchange, but also with the number of uh, interlocutors from Russian Federation side today and tomorrow. Спасибо.